Mm. Hello, and welcome to our garden. No, Lauren, we're in the dining room. What? What are we doing here? I keep getting confused. Today we're going to do a Q&A. Lauren, we've never done one before. April, I have a question. Yes. I was trying to think of the chicken crossing the road joke, like how it starts and I couldn't remember. Like, why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the garden. So yes, today we have asked for your questions on Instagram and directly to friends when we didn't get enough on Instagram, but we did get one. Shout out to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. You can follow their channel. Yeah, they have a YouTube channel too and an Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, we are going to answer some questions about us and about gardening, etc. We have both dogs here today to be cute. Uh, should we start with the Instagram yeah. questions? Question, singular. Here is the question. Are you ready, Lauren? I'm ready. What is something you will only eat if you grow it yourself, but won't eat it if you bought it in the store? Hmm. This is a great question. Do you have one of these? Thank you for asking it. I don't, that's kind of tough. Especially because I feel like we live somewhere where we get a lot of really good produce. good produce yeah there are some things that i like better fresh but i will still get from the store like carrots i love a fresh carrot yeah. over a store-bought carrot green like, beans you gotta have carrots so i buy them even if we don't you know green beans yeah squeaky squeaky green beans fresh green beans so the way i like green beans is they're cooked just so that they squeak on your teeth but mm -hmm. they have to be really fresh fresh to, get to that do way. that yeah um i Never buy heirloom tomatoes at the store. Oh, yeah. You can get fairly decent heirlooms at the store, but most heirlooms don't um, transport well, so there's a pretty limited variety of kinds, and they just tend to not be as sweet or flavorful. I mean, tomatoes in general, especially if you're going to eat them raw, they're so much better from the garden. That doesn't mean I don't buy them from the store. Yeah. I buy them a lot less now since you're allergic, so. <laughs> right. Uh, so, some questions from, from our friend Amber. Thanks, Amber, for all these great questions. She sent a bunch to me. Here's one question. What is the best way to compost? Do we? And if so, what do we compost? Listen, I'm looking over your shoulder, and you skipped the first question. I was going to do it after. Is that because you don't want me oh, to I get forgot that was any the first... more backyard fowls? <laughs> because... I've been researching ducks and quails. Yeah, it would be fun to and have. Geese. The, the thing is, we have limited room. If we got many more fowls for the backyard, I think we'd need another coop. quail. We could keep quail. We could keep quail because they're small. Or um, what about guinea fowl, Lauren? I think our neighbors would hate us. They're very noisy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. Our chickens are already noisy. The enough. first question, which is not the question we read, is: Are you planning on taking on any and other backyard fowl. Yes. Fowl as in birds. Do you think we could do pheasants? <laughs> no. <laughs> they need fields. I don't think stuff. we could. Yeah. Our backyard's not actually that big. Yeah. Yeah. It's not where our garden is. No. So can we answer the compost question now? What's the compost question? I wasn't listening. <laughs> what is the best way to compost? Do we, and if so, what do we compost? Uh, okay. The best way is is whatever way is best for you. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. Uh, for limited space, when you want fast composting, I really actually like those drum composters. Oh yeah. Because they turn over your compost really easily without you having to do a lot of manual work. Yeah. I have typically done just like bin layer composting and turn it over once a year but I've always been okay with waiting a year for compost. So that's, you know, when you right. fill up one compost bin and then you turn that compost over to a second bin and you start filling up the first bin again, yeah. and then and the then, second bin you empty into your garden. And then garden. when you want to, and yeah, you want to enrich the soil. And you um, 
So that's kind of more time consuming. I'm a big but fan of a pile too. Just one pile. Just do a pile. That you add to the front the of it and then you take from the back and as you need it. And to keep it not as, you know, gross if you're just putting like vegetable and fruit peels and stuff that would like rot and smell like just layer in leaves and mm -hmm. grass clippings and that stuff that will help mulch and break down and seal in that stuff. um you should look in your local area because some communities will actually give you a free compost bin or a low cost compost bin yeah. i know one of the common ones for that is like a black one and it has like a lid and you put stuff in the top and it's got airflow holes but then it also has a hatch in the bottom so as you fill up the top you can then open the bottom and that's great Take for like out. small amounts of compost even for your house plants and stuff yeah it can generally handle a small amount of yard clippings and all your kitchen compost yeah. you can buy those too but i've just noticed that yeah lots of towns have a like apply and get a free compost bin yeah you just have to say i have right. a place for this yeah another way that you can compost which is very easy if you have a garden is just throw the stuff in your garden bury it the off season if it's something and, that's gonna yeah if it's get... gonna attract like raccoons or something um mm -hmm. bury it under like straw or grass clippings or leaves the dogs are so cute they albert cute. is sleeping <laughs> on top of agnes quick lauren okay. list 10 things that we put in the compost that was part of the thing we have a worm bin by the way cantaloupe peels. but we also do so other vegetable peels so avocado pits i like to find them sprouted later pretty much any kind of leaf except black walnut leaf draw from your halloween decorations coffee grounds in the filter eggshells grass clippings tea bags as yes, long as they're not tea bags. plastic yes the plastic mesh kind you shouldn't yeah. uh, Loose leaf tea, grapefruits. Any kind uh, of citrus peels or flesh. Uh, pumpkins. Any fresh fruits or vegetables. Uh, watermelon yeah, old Halloween rind. pumpkins. Sticks, small sticks are yeah. actually fine. As long as they're, I'd say, smaller than a finger. They're gonna take a while to break down. Yeah, right? so if you don't want, if you're if you're trying to turn your compost quickly yeah. um, and you don't want sticks in it later, then don't yeah. put sticks in. Oh, but. also, um, wood chips. If yeah. if you get like a tree chipped yeah. by you or free wood well, chips, probably also just like bark dust, like or yeah. like a wood, you know. If you just I don't know, happen to have some, if you were sawdust, doing, yeah, sawdust. If you were doing some from wood, woodworking non projects, non-treated wood, yes. So don't put treated wood in your. You don't want that around your plants. Ashes from your fireplace. Oh yes, I that's usually a really put good those one. directly on my garden, yeah. um, so that because potash, which is uh, is very water soluble, so you will lose that pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah. if you don't have plants growing right now, throw it in your compost. It won't hurt yep. anything. It'll enrich everything. Okay, next question. We gotta keep keep moving. Do we have any interest in planting any other fruit trees or berry bushes in the back forty? I want to plant an uh, apricot tree, but I don't know that I can do that in the back 40 because it's not our it's land. Not our land. Uh, but we are going to grow a, um, a kiwi, a ki uh, like miniature kiwi yeah. tree bush. It's more like a sh bush vine? shrub. A tall vine. More like a shrub. I don't We're know. growing a vine. We're going to grow that in our front yard. Or in the back 40. Or we haven't decided. Somewhere. Somewhere. Okay. Um, do you have any deer problems where you live? What do you do to protect from them? Grow something that they like more. Yeah, that you don't care about them eating. Like roses. Yeah. Right, <laughs> like mom, Ma's rose garden when we were kids. The, the deer loved them. Dogs help too. We got rid of them. Albert then. chases deer. Yeah, we, I haven't noticed deer because we live close to, we don't live near right now where deer yeah. hang out. If you have a really serious um, deer problem, uh, all you can really do is completely cover your garden. Like yeah. like walls and mesh ceiling. Right. Cause there's- Our cousins live out in the country on a mountain. They get like cougars and stuff, but uh, also lots of deer and their their garden is just like f totally walled in. Not, not on top, but it has high um, yeah. edges. Companies and it's make- mesh and has wood frames. And companies stuff, so. make- a lot of money on deer deterrent products. There are some natural plants that keep them out, but you can also get things like sprinklers on motion sensors and right. I don't yeah, know, all kinds of stuff. You know, let the deer be deer and plant just cover something. Plant if some you roses. For yeah, them. plant some plants for your deer. 
Gotta sacrifice something. They're part of the earth too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would your dream garden have in it? An asparagus patch. Oh yeah. I've never been in a place long enough where I knew I could grow an asparagus patch. They're perennials. In the first year, you can't really harvest any. In the second year, you can only harvest a little bit. And it's not till the like fourth year that they really start going. Um, yeah. So I would, I'd really like that. Yeah. I'm trying to think. We bought so many seeds this year. I'm trying to think of something that like. Well, we I mean, maybe have we gotten, have our dream maybe, garden now. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we do if it works out, but. I'm excited to grow kohlrabi again. It's not that exciting, but it looks like aliens, so. I take black-eyed peas and I stick them in the kohlrabi as eyes, so they really oh, yeah, do look do like aliens. Uh, we'll have to put that on the Instagram. All right, what's next? next? Okay, uh, oh, that was all of Amber's questions. Thank you so much, Amber. Moving on to uh, my other friends' oh, questions. I didn't know your other friends had, had yeah, questions. Yeah, I told wow, you. I Tina and it. Sarah sent a bunch of questions. Great. Love it. We'll have to do more of these. Um, Sarah says, I have to censor it. It's not that bad. <laughs> she says, she wants to know about how we both know all this stuff about gardening and food. Hmm. I think there's a lot of reasons. I mean, you're the expert. <laughs> right. Well, one thing I would say is our roots. And by roots, I don't mean like plant roots. I mean like carrots, rutabagas, beets. No, no, I mean, no, not those roots either. <laughs> I mean like our our familial heritage. Yeah. You know, like uh, we have parents who garden and grandparents. Yeah. I mean, do you want to know Gr the true story? Grandma, Andrew? Otto, gra grandpa, wait. Grandpa Otto and his tomatoes, grandma and her huge garden, yep. mom and dad, and then we've got farmers way back. Do you want to know the story, my personal story? Yeah, okay. When I was three, I ran away from home, and I wandered. Oh my goodness. And I found a garden, and <sighs> uh, two very nice uh, ladies uh, growing that garden, and they were sisters, and... Mm, my mother found me. They brought me back. I don't know. Anyways, but we became friends with them. They were our back neighbors. And from three until seven, I regularly visited them and helped with their garden. So that got me an early love of gardening. So that's what you were doing while I was helping mom in our garden? Probably. Okay. Uh, and then mom had a garden. We learned canning Big from that. Garden. Yeah, uh, we grew up with, with a mother and grandparents yeah. who our did friends, lots of gardening and canning and things like that. One and of our friends from Canada who, or who mm. lives in Canada who used to live in um, our Iowa, hometown Iowa, where we live. is a horticulturalist. And then when I was like 10, I got, uh, my dad gave me this book called the Reader's Digest Back to Basics book, which is a homesteading book. Should I grab it? And I, I got really I'm into homesteading. I learned in lots of skills, started reading about gardening. Yeah. Begged mom and dad for a garden. So I'll just say, uh, Lauren was like the kid who, when she got interested in something, then she would get like every book the library had on it. Like yeah. if it was having a fish tank, then suddenly there'd be like 15 books about fish care in the house. And same with gardening. Like she would just read all kinds of books and then just do stuff. Or like back to basics, she just like built a coracle, like this boat this one time. And then... And then on our after college, well, during college, yeah. I found a garden. I met a you gardener. You did find a garden. I was allowed Lauren. to hang out in always, the garden. Always finding Do gardens. my homework. Uh, it's like the secret garden over here. I picked this a one? lot of lemons and yeah. Tan oh man, or uh, blood oranges and stuff. The only tangerines. garden thing I miss in California oh, is yeah. citrus. citrus. I yeah. would really. Uh, my dream garden has citrus, citrus. growing in it. Yeah, same. Doesn't work well in Oregon. Yeah. Um, and then. After college, I became a farm intern in Michigan and did some organic farming and some urban farming and learned some permaculture and this and that. And I don't know, we're I, like I say all that and it makes it sound really official, but we're really amateurs because you just yeah, yeah. You, like you try things. Right. So that's, that's what that's what we're all about. Read Strings, things, things. Try like, things. Sure, maybe we grew up gardening and knowing some of this stuff, but if you know, that's that's just a jumping off. We still could have done all this and that anyone yeah. can if you didn't grow up that way 
you still have a jumping off point. You yeah. just have a smaller one. Right. But you know what? Diving boards are narrow. It's a great metaphor. metaphor <laughs> anyway, so yeah, read some books, watch our channel. You just try stuff if you're interested in gardening or all right. food I'm preserving. Or they know. They whatever. know the drill. They know what we're passionate okay, about. Fine. They know the channel brand. Anyway, that's why we know. Okay, next one. All that stuff. Uh, Tina asks, when do you plant tulips? It's very Iowa thing. When, when do you plant tulips if you are in a warmer climate like California? Let me give some background. Our friend Tina comes from a town in Iowa. We came from a similar town, but then we met in college. Uh, that town has uh, something called the Tulip Festival. It's a Dutch thing. Anyway, um, so obviously growing bulbs in a climate that snows all winter and is much colder it's going to be different than where she lives now in California. I think Tina wants to grow some tulips for yeah. the tulip festival in May. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting question. I can take a stab at it. I'm missing some knowledge here. Yeah, I don't totally know, but here's what I do know. In some climates, you have to dig up your tulips because it actually gets too cold for them in the winter. That's how it is in Iowa. I it think. is? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just reading Sprouts and Saplings in there in Iowa, so that's so, what she does. So here, you generally, and, and south of us in California, you generally don't have to lift almost any kind of bulb overnight uh, or over winter except for dahlias. They're still too sensitive oh, yeah. for it. Yeah. And a, a few other ones. Um, so you typically plant them in the fall. And for California, that's going to be even later than here. Um, so probably like in December November, or December. November. Yeah, like late after it's gotten colder. H however, yes, we've planted bulbs super, super late, like early spring. Yeah, like in February. We <laughs> we planted daffodil bulbs in like February Where or March. Where our and moms had lots were of already them. like start they were like <laughs> this far out of the ground, and we put our bulbs yeah. in. And I think some of them they were in the garage, and some of them had started to sprout a little. But yeah, you can still plant them. But if you're in a really warm climate, I would buy your bulbs and then chuck them in your fridge for a week or two, so that they get that cold period and they yeah. know that it's okay to. Yeah. Start growing when it warms up. So Tina, um, do it now. Get yeah. some bulbs and do it now. And maybe if, if look at the forecast and if it's going to be pretty cold, especially at night still. Then plant them. In California, the, that's cool a higher swing night. of yeah. cooler temperatures at night. So you're probably fine. Yeah. Plant them now and you'll get some tulips. They might be slightly later in the season than they would have been. But yeah, you should yeah. be good. Do it. Okay. Oh, and then she said, or in general, plants like that, which are seasonal in colder climates, but could grow on different cycles in warmer places. Yeah, I think, I think things that often you would do, like plant in the colder season mm -hmm. to come up in warmer season. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's like, usually it's like fall or Well, like spring here or... in Oregon, geraniums are pretty much annuals, mm. but in California, they grow year round. Yeah. Um, the, my general rule of thumb is avoid extremes. So don't plant them during the coolest part of the year and don't plant during the hottest part of the year. Yeah. The rest of the time, especially in a place like California that has like good growing weather right. pretty much year round, give it a shot. Yeah. For California, I would mostly just say watch out for the hottest part of the year. Yeah. The coldest part of the year is probably not going to be cold enough to ruin anything. Yeah. Plant stuff in the winter. That's a good bet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sarah asks, what are some of the best slash easiest indoor plants? Like house plants. Oh, some, uh, what is it? Scottish, what, English, what kind of ivy? Is this so called? I know this one plant by Swedish ivy. I don't know what the Latin name is. Um, Ours actually looks kind of sad compared to many I've seen, but. But it's that's because easy to grow. I put mine in a window it didn't like, and it almost completely died. And then yeah. I just chopped the tops and replanted them, and they started growing again. So easy. Yep. Um, what are these things called? I can't remember. I can't remember either. These things. Someone comment, or we'll put it in the. If you see we'll one of these, it. you know, growing somewhere, you ask permission, chop off a thing, put it in water. It's going to be growing before you know it. Yeah, and then plant and it. they're pretty tolerant to low light and high light. 
If you let them completely, completely, completely dry out for months, then they definitely will die. And they don't, I've noticed they don't like to be in a really, really hot place. This is commonly known as an umbrella plant. Yes, umbrella plant. And these are also really easy to start and I've just had a lot of success growing them all over the place. They're a little bit prone to pests like thrips and scale. So if you buy one of these from a grocery store, keep an eye out for those. Yeah. Maybe keep it apart from your regular but plants. But if, um, if you have some kind of plant spray yeah. um, or like neem oil, just like treat it a few times with that even when you've first gotten it and you should be good to go. Yeah. So those are our recommendations. Great. Um, and then Tina asks, why are those Monstera plants so expensive? Have they always been expensive? Ooh, well, yes and no. Yes, they've always been somewhat expensive. Two, they're really popular right now, so that is driving the cost. I mean, look at any yoga video. There's a Monstera in the background. Yeah. Um, three, they take actually kind of a long time to grow. Yeah. The they're good news slower. is they're really easy to start from cuttings. Any any big house plant that you buy is going to be expensive. It's going to be really expensive, especially if it takes a long time to grow. Yeah. Um, because someone has had to have the job of you mm -hmm. know raising, propagating, and raising these plants and getting them ready to sell. Yeah. It takes longer than in non-COVID times. You can sometimes look up um, plant swaps. Yeah. In your city, uh, you could ask which friends have which plants and swap cuttings back and forth. You can look on Craigslist. Yeah, you people can look will on, sell plant cuttings. On Etsy. You can yeah. get a lot of stuff on Etsy. Or, you have to be careful about state guidelines for shipping and receiving yeah, um, plants, plant material, borders. especially if you live in places like Hawaii, California. There's a few other states. Alaska, I think, are a little bit more... Uh, have yeah. rigid lines, or which is good because, I mean, non-native conceal, conceal a pair of scissors in your handbag, go to public places with large real plants like libraries, and or, just real sneaky cut some cuttings. Uh, or ask permission. Our monstera comes Do from ask. a library. Yeah. And that, we were given it for free. It worked there. It was, yeah. But yeah, sometimes places need to like really prune back their plants and they would just get thrown away otherwise or they wouldn't mind sharing a cutting. So you can always ask. Yep. Yeah. I think those are all the, I'll double check if anyone else oh. did a, sent a, nope. Great. So those are the questions and those are the answers. You can email us a question at any time. Here's our email. Do you can you say it out loud too for Yes. It's Lauren and April at gmail.com. And we'll answer it in a future QA video. And to follow our Instagram, it's uh, at the Lauren and April show. If I ever ask questions again, then you can be on there and be sure to Maybe we should send do some a, in a live uh, Instagram live sometime. Yeah, that we should. Fun. We should do that. Uh, and then the other thing is, if you want us to do more videos like this, comment on the video. Yeah. Please like let it. us know if you enjoyed this or not. We didn't know what to film today. So if somehow you're this. a first time viewer and you watch this one first and you want to see future videos about actual, like us doing garden stuff, yeah. uh, then subscribe. In the video, yeah. And you'll be there along for the ride. All right, bye. Okay, bye.